The new money, Dr. Pick said that late 1983 or early 1984 was the target date for the new money. Carl Mintz, a staff member of the House Banking Committee, had said, I believe it's in the billions of dollars, and it's buried in lots of places. In the late 1970s, it was believed to have already been printed, and stored at the Federal Reserve Emergency Relocation Facility in Culpeper, Virginia, which is built into the side of a mountain, and would be able to continue functioning during the aftermath of a nuclear or natural disaster, and the 200,000 square, featuring Federal Reserve Underground Facility in Mount Weather, Virginia, near Berryville, which is the primary relocation area for the President, Cabinet Secretaries, Supreme Court Justices, and several thousand federal employees, Congress would be relocated to an underground facility in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. It is believed, that when our monetary system is finally destroyed, a reorganization will occur within the confines of a world government, and new money will be issued. Rep. Ron Paul, Republican from Texas, who was on the Committee on Banking, Finance, and Urban Affairs, wrote about the new money in a letter to Charles T. Roberts, Executive Vice President of the Hull State Bank in Texas. In a closed briefing for the members of the House Banking Committee on November 2, representatives of the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, the Federal Reserve, and the Secret Service described plans for making changes in Federal Reserve notes beginning in 1985, although the long-range target is 1988. These changes, which will probably include tagants, security threads, and colors, and may include holograms, diffraction gratings, or watermarks, will be made in coordination with six other nations. Canada, Britain, Japan, Australia, West Germany, and Switzerland. Japan, for example, will begin recalling its present currency in November, 1984, and have it nearly completed within six months. According to the government, the only reason for the currency changes is to deter counterfeiting. Although it was admitted by one spokesman in the group that there would have to be a colon of our present currency for new currency to work, the spokesmen for the government were adamant in saying that there was no other motive for a currency change. According to law, only the Treasury Secretary has the authority to change the currency. Over $3 million had been spent under counterfeit prevention authority for the development of the new money, which according to the Currency Design Act, H.R. 6005, hearings would be issued by the Federal Reserve Board. It was first reported by the Patterson Organization in Cincinnati, Ohio, that in a July, 1983 market survey in Buena Park, California, people were shown proposed designs for new U.S. dollar bills. The variations shown, consisted of each denomination being a different color, Federal Reserve seals replaced with a design utilizing reflective ink, and other optical devices like holograms, a process which produces a three-dimensional image which can change color depending on the angle it is viewed, and multi-layer diffraction gratings, similar to a hologram, as well as bills containing metal security threads, and planchettes, red and blue colored discs incorporated into the paper, similar to threads, to trigger scanning equipment which would detect its presence, and to sort cash faster. A consumer research firm from Illinois was hired by the Treasury Department to gauge the public's reactions to the various designs. It was shown that a drastic change would not be accepted, so a process of incrementalism was adopted. It was decided that the Bureau of Printing and Engraving would have a fine metallic strip running through the currency, leaving the basic design intact. However, they later decided to use a clear imprinted polyester strip, woven into the paper, running vertically on the left side of the Federal Reserve seal. The length of the translucent polyester filament reads USA 100 for $100 bills, USA 50 for $50 bills, and so on, and can only be read if held up to direct light. It was reported that a company called Checkmate Electronics Incorporated, which manufactures the equipment needed to scan checks, scan the new money, and found the strip to contain machine-detectable aluminum. Their scan produced an indecipherable barcode. Though the basic design did not change, there was microscopic type printed around the picture which reads, The United States of America but appeared to only be a line. This currency with oversized, off-center portraits, was introduced in 1996 with the $100 bills, then $50 bills and $20 bills, 1998, and culminated with $10S and $5S in 2000. The government discontinued printing any of the old money, and began emptying their vaults to get rid of the old bills. The old money was never recalled, and continued to be circulated. Then in June, 2002, only a few years after the last makeover, the rumors of colored money became a fact, as the Bureau of Engraving and Printing announced that further changes were being made to our money for security reasons. In October, 2003, the new, colored $20 bill, the most counterfeited note, was introduced. The new bill retained the security thread, color-shifting ink, and watermark, but also had the colors of green and peach added to its background, as well as small yellow 20s printed on the back. The new $50 and $100 bills will be coming in 2004 and 2005.
Some financial experts have theorized that when every denomination is changed over, that the business sector may not want to accept old bills, which would then become worthless, and could create a financial emergency. But federal officials have said that the old money would be accepted, but scrutinized. It has been suggested that the government could really take advantage of the situation, that in order for people to exchange their old money for new, an exchange rate may be determined which would benefit the economy. For example, it may take two old dollars to exchange for a new one. It is possible that we may be experiencing the final transition to the new money. Quat. This transitional currency may be just another step in testing the public's willingness to accept economic change. The Reserve formerly had about seven currency sorting machines which counted up to 55,000 bills per minute, but by the end of 1983, they had received 110 new machines which could count up to 72,000 bills per minute. Jane Kettleson, an economic consultant to the U.S. Paper Exchange, said that, the Fed will have the capability to physically replace the entire U.S. currency in circulation in just four days' time. Quat. The International Monetary Fund has been responsible for the decline of our dollar, and our present economic situation. The first step to initiating this crash was the Monetary Control Act of 1980, which instead of a 6 to 1 ratio, mandated the Federal Reserve to only have $1 on deposit for every 12 they create. Further plans were made during a meeting of Western leaders at Williamsburg, Virginia, on May 28-30, 1983. International cooperation has been intense to coordinate currency changes among its member governments. In 1985, officials from the Morgan Bank in New York met with the Credit Lyonnais Bank in France. They established the European Currency Unit Banking Association, a Cuba, to get world cooperation for a unified currency, and had support from bankers in Europe, Japan, and the United States. It was an offshoot of the Banking Federation of the European Community, BFEC, which has been engaged in shutting down small banks in order to develop a conglomerate of a few huge banks. In October, 1987, the Association for the Monetary Union of Europe, AMUE, secretly met and recommended that the ECU, European Currency Unit, replace existing national currencies, and that all European central banks be combined into one and issue the ECU as the official unified currency, which is scheduled to occur in the year 2000. It is believed that the plan is to have only three central banks in the world, the Federal Reserve Bank, the European Central Bank, and the Central Bank of Japan. In a June, 1989 hearing of the Senate Banking Securities Subcommittee, Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve, said that exchange rates could be fixed in order to solve the problem of uniformity between the currencies of various nations. Many countries have issued new money, such as Switzerland, the United Kingdom, Japan, Canada, France, Germany, Australia, and Brazil. Of the countries that already had, most currencies had a common one-inch square, usually on the left side of the bill. Held over a light, a hologram appears on the spot, barely visible to the naked eye, which cannot be reproduced on a copier. It is believed that this spot is being reserved for a central world bank overprint. They also contain metallic strips that can be detected when they pass through scanners at airports and international borders. On May 10, 1994, when USA Today carried a page one article concerning major changes in the design of the paper currency, which was expected to take place by the end of the year, it was accompanied with a picture of the new $100 bill, featuring a larger portrait of Benjamin Franklin which had been pushed to the right side of the bill, and the eagle in the center. The line United States of America appeared along the top right, and the line $100 appeared on the lower left, with the serial number being placed over that. There was a conspicuous open spot on the left side of the bill, very similar to the new currency in other countries, which some researchers feared was being reserved for some future use. The institution of a common worldwide currency may be delayed because of the possibility of moving right to a cashless system, making paper money obsolete. The Visa Magi card was the first step towards a national debit card. With this card, you could make purchases at any of the 10 million merchants who accepted Visa, and have the amount electronically deducted from your checking account. Financial experts said at the time, that within only a few years, there would be more debit cards than credit cards. Since then, there has been a massive campaign to promote debit cards, and a move to accommodate their use in all areas of life. More and more banks have decided not to return people's cancelled checks, because of the expense to do so, and it seems likely that there is a plan underway to gradually move away from the use of paper checks. With the existence of debit cards, and the fact that credit cards are so easily attainable, there's no doubt that we're being pushed into an electronic economy of direct deposit and automatic withdrawal. When total saturation has been achieved, then the stage will be set. Sure, it's really convenient to whip out a piece of plastic to buy things, and to have all your financial affairs handled through the bank's computer system. But do you realize, that when their plan is complete, you will be nothing more than a number in a computer. Everything you do can be tracked, and with a click of a mouse, or the press of a button, you could be denied access to your own money. In a letter to Edward M. House, 
President Wilson's closest aide, dated November 23, 1933, Franklin D. Roosevelt said, The real truth of the matter is, and you and I know, that a financial element in the large centers has owned the government of the U.S. since the days of Andrew Jackson. Quat. Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company, said, It is well enough that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Quat. In 1957, Senator George W. Malone of Nevada said before Congress about the Federal Reserve, I believe that if the people of this nation fully understood what Congress has done to them over the past 49 years, they would move on Washington, they would not wait for an election. It adds up to a preconceived plan to destroy the economic and social independence of the United States. Quat. 